Jesus. Come on, begin to give your great God a praise this morning. Oh, how many know he's an awesome God? He's worthy of the praise. I thank you right now, Jesus, for being in the midst. Oh, we thank you, God. This is a part of the service. Everybody can begin to join in. Clap your hands, stomp your feet. Shout hallelujah, he's worthy. Oh, 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 This is the day that the Lord has made.
oh God. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, majesty. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we begin to worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, we worship you, Jesus. There's none like you, God. Oh, there's none like you. We give it all to you right now. Oh, for you alone are worthy of my praise, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. How many know he's worthy this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, majesty.
Jesus. We would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining in service with us here at Philadelphia Ministries. We have a special song just for you, and we'd like to thank you again for joining in our virtual service, amen? And for the visitors in the house, we thank you so much for coming. Welcome to Philadelphia Ministries. We're so glad that you joined us on today. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Welcome to Philadelphia. Join us at 3181 Destrahan Avenue, Harvey, Louisiana. How many got a praise on your heart this morning?
y'all doing? I'm Kareem. Um, I've come to just say something about black history and what y'all didn't know about them or whatever. Good morning, Pam. Uh, glory be to God. Did you know Marie Van Buren invented the home security system? Ms. Van Buren Brown invented the home security system in 1966. She also attended three colleges, Harrison College, University of Phoenix, and DeVry University. Did you also know about ha Alfred Benjamin? Well, let me tell you a little bit more about him. Did you know that Did you know that Alfred was a German bank employee who became a communi communist art activist? He was obligated to an immigrate in 1935 in France, where after 1940, he joined the French residence. He died from attempting to escape from collaborating French Switzerland. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Black excellence. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give it up for Black History Month. Let's give it up for our praise team. And the young man who just spoke to us, referencing some of our heroes down through the years. Well, today is Valentine's Day. It's called the Love Day. So this month I'm talking to you about love and I trust that um, you would embrace this love with the love of Jesus. So today I want to continue in the series of love. First John chapter 4 talks about it and he really digs into it. First John chapter 4 and verses 7 through 21. I don't think I'm going to read all of that. There's too much reading. So first John chapter 4 and begin to verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that love it is born of God and knoweth God. He that love it not not God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. In verse 13, hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. 14, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. Verse 20, if any man say, I love God and hated his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Father, we thank you today. We bless you again for allowing us to be in this service. And those who are watching by virtual, we pray, God, for them and all of those who are here today. We ask you now to breathe upon this word. It already have life in it. Let that life become life to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, the continuation of love, I want to talk about knowing God's love. How do we know how God loves us? So John talks about it. He, he kind of gives us some uh, picturesque things about uh, this great love of God. People trying to love folks, but they don't know how to love because they don't have the love of God inside of them. Possibly the, the one topic throughout many books that have been written through life uh, is about love songs. It's about uh, people falling in love. It has been said at one time, what the world needs now is love. What the world needs now is love. And because of where we are today and what we are facing in, in justice society, we need love. 
And that's what, uh, I guess, uh, precipitating all of this stuff that's happening because there's not enough love. Dr. Martin Luther King, and I quote, said, love is a powerful tool, more powerful than hate. Because if you hate your enemies, you have no way to redeem and transform your enemies. But if you love your enemies, you will discover that at the very root of love is the power of redemption, end quote. Brothers and sisters, you must understand, he also goes on, and I quote again, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. End quote. I quote again from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I quote, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. End quote. Brothers and sisters, we must understand that it's all about love. And so then, what's the difference love can make in one's life? I'm glad you asked. Because love can make a very significant difference in one's life because one cannot bear the burden of living in hate and disbelief and discontentment. So brothers and sisters, John breaks it down in verses 7 through 8. He says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and the one that love is born of God and knows God. And the one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So what is love? While it's simply word, worded, it defines a simple definition. Someone once said love is a many splendid thing. Love stories has not been all told at one time, but through a period of time, through poetry, literature, screenplays, and songs. There's a song that when I was growing up early in my life and I enjoyed these songs, it was by Michael Jackson. He said, I'll be there. I'll be there with a love that's strong. I'll be there with your strength. I'll keep holding on. Yes, I'll be there. I'll be there. Now, some of you just went back into the world. Come back with me. Come back with me. I'll be there. And then my favorite guy, Al Green. Let's stay together. Oh, it's loving you forever. It's what I need. Let me be the one you're going to run to. I'll never be untrue. Let's stay together. Anybody want to stay together today? Then Al Green, he was so nice to me. I was in love. I was 17 years old. I was so in love with this girl. She was in the ninth grade and I was in the 12th grade. Oh God, it was everything that I needed. Seems as though she was the only girl in the world out of millions. He had a song called Love and Happiness. Make you want to do right. Mm -hmm. Love and happiness. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey. I'm just checking your, your temps to where you are. Some of you need to be in some love and happiness. Brothers and sisters, you got to understand uh, that's what love is all. This is Valentine's Day. And maybe you want to put on some love and happiness. Oh, I know you're spiritually speaking in tongues, but uh, that's going out the window. You don't stop speaking in tongues. You cussing in tongues. Oh, I didn't want to say it like that, but maybe you need to put some love and happen to get you back on the right track. Mm -hmm. mm. If loving you is right, I don't want to do wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You remember those songs, if loving you is right, I don't want to do wrong. What love got to do with it? There's a lot to do with it because Jesus says, I love you in spite of. We need to pick up some attributes of Jesus. And so in our text, John says, uh, he talks about love. A farmer put a weather vane on top of his barn with words, God is love, inscribed in it. One day a man stopped by and was watching the weather vane move around with the wind. Then with 
a smirk on his face. He asked the farmer, does that mean your God is a changeable as the wind? The farmer replied his head and said, out of his head and said, no. What it means is that no matter which way the wind blows, God still is love. So it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. God still is love. And how difficult it may be, he's still love. Yeah. Notice, notice John said love is God. He said love. He didn't say love is God. But John says love does define God. But he rather said God defines love. Brothers and sisters, what that means to you, love is central attributes of God. Love is the very nature of God. God doesn't have to work at love or try to conjure up love. He doesn't need to go looking for love or to like people or to love them. And does he fall in and out of love with you? God would never say to you, I don't love you like I used to. I don't love you anymore. That's what you say. God never says love any, love you any more or any less based on your reaction to him. As many times we fail him, he doesn't say, you know what? I'm in love with you today and out tomorrow. You know how we do that. Based on the condition of what someone does for you, it determines how you feel about them. And I don't want to get into a marriage seminar right now, but I could pause there for a minute and stay there for the next three days. You know how that is. Brothers and sisters, John says, I want to reassure you of God's love. As little children, we were growing up. They would tell us to sing song like this. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. We don't sing that no more. You don't teach that to your kids. John referred to us as beloved. He used the word beloved. Assuring to us that love is especially made by God. And some of us this morning need to hear that God still loves you in spite of what you've done, in spite of where you've been. He still loves you this morning. Brothers and sisters, you need to understand that's his great love. Then love, he says, God gives you love through him through responsibility. It's right in your text, verse 7. He said, let us love one another. Someone has said, if you love can't reach the, those who are nearest to you, neither can it reach God. If love can't reach the person next to you, it can't reach God. So where's the love? Then the other thing he says, love a relationship. Since God is love, love defines those who belong to God. John tells us right in the text, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Do you know God today? Have you been born again today? Do you understand the power of the Holy Spirit? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Or you just attend church. You know, years ago I preached sincere but not saved. There's a whole lot of folks go to church, they sincere, but they're not saved. They don't know his love. Love is the testament and it determines who has been born of God and knows God. There's no way you can say you hate your brother and you don't like this one and don't like it and you hate them. Apparently you're not born again. Because you don't have Jesus inside of you. Jeremiah 31 and 3 says it like this. The Lord has appeared of old unto me saying, Yea, I have loved thee. Watch this. With the everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, have I drawn you to me. In all of my dirt and filth, God reached out and he drew me unto him. And said, Daniel, come home and let me love you. You don't really have a love until you have Jesus caressing you and loving you. He's the only one can give you love. I know you like your wife, your husband, your children, and any accessories that you have. But there's no greater love than the song saying that what Jesus did. He laid down his life for you and I. That's a love. Here's the other movement of the text. It's the movement that says he sent his only son. It's right here in chapter 4. 1 John 4, 9, 3, 11, what he said. It was a manifest of the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Here in love, not that we love God. No, we didn't. But he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. He had to die for the sins that we were living in. 
Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. God not only tells us he loves us, but he shows us he loves us. Look what he said. You know it, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for us. Now who shall believe in him shall not die, shall not perish, but they shall live and live. Watch God. God love is visible. It's manifested right in the text. God love is costly. He sent his son. He died for us. God love has a purpose so we might live God love is voluntarily. In spite of us, he did it. How many times you volunteer to do something for someone who has hurt you or wronged you? God love is sacrificial. Jesus died for our sins. Brothers and sisters, Jesus didn't simply preach love of God, but he proved it by giving his life on the cross. Death of Jesus is measures of God's love. Look what Romans 8, 5 and 8 says, but God proved his love for us that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Watch this. The value of one's soul is measured by the price Jesus paid on the cross. The value of one's soul is made by the price that Jesus bared and died and paid for on the cross. It's right there in verse 11. If everyone lame excuse and make excuses about people and why I can't love a person, think about Jesus. He died just for that one soul if you want to think about it. If he gave his life for that one soul, why can't you? Brothers and sisters, a survey was conducted by a team of professionals. That's what they said. The question was asked, what do people love the most in life. Some of the categories included children, animals, God, the United States, their enemies, and themselves. 92% of people said they love their children the most. 86 said we love God the most. 75% said they love the United States the most. I guess we saw that in January the 6th. 66% said they love animals the most. 33% says they acknowledge they love themselves the most. 20% confess they love their enemies. Out of 100%, only 20% says they love the enemies less than all the love you can give. Can you imagine that? These are Christians now. These are churchgoers. These are people who love God. These are people who dance. These are people who sing songs. And, and these are people who say hallelujah and glory to God. And these are people who say I'm going higher and wider and deeper. These are people who say he's enlarged my tent. Oh, the grace of God is ever before me. I'm blessed and highly favored. These are the people who say this. But they don't love like God loved them. The third move in the text, and I'm almost done here, because God lives in you. It's right there in the text, verses 12 through 16. No man, no one is beheld God at any time. But if we love one another, he says he used the word abides. He used the word dwelleth in your Bible. Abides and dwelleth in the perfect of us. By this we know that we abide or dwelleth in him because he's in us, because he given us. 14 said he has beheld and bear witness of us. He says all this, of, jump down to 16, and we become to know and believe the love which God has for us. Watch what God does. He gives us actions. The action right there in verse 12, while people may not be able to see God, guess who they see? They see God through you. People will never be able to tangibly walk up to Jesus and shake his hand and say, praise the Lord, Jesus, how are you doing today? But they'll see it through the bishop. They'll see it through Sister Mary, Brother Joe. They'll see it. And they'll say, you know what? That got to be the love of God. So God left us here to be an example of that. Then in words, what are you saying, Bishop? Bear witness. How do I know I love you because I'm bearing witness of what God says? He said he loved me, so I got to love 
you. Brothers and sisters, then it's my belief. I just believe that I've got to love you in spite of what you do to me. I've got to believe the scripture says vengeance belongs to God. That's what I have to believe. I can't take a portion of the scripture and pick over it like a smorgasbord and eat what I want. The Bible says eat the whole roll. So, have you experienced this before, Bishop? Yes. People have got on your last nerve. Yes. Did you want to cuss them? No, I don't cuss. I want to cuss them before I got saved, so I ain't going to start after I get saved. Some of y'all can roll off cuss words. It's like you're speaking in time. Like, God, where did that come from? The Bible said, what's in you will come out of you. You can't make apology for what's already in you. You know, we say all these things, then we want to apologize. What are you apologizing for? That's what's in you. If you are not smart enough to say a certain word, you can't speak it because it's not in you. So when you say something, you apologize. That's in you. That's part of your heritage. That's part of who you are as a person. And so then, it's difficult for us to fight through this as Christians. The easy part is just to go to church, enjoy church, and look at your neighbors if they some kind of disease. The, last, the next movement is he transformed you. Aren't you glad? Love transformed you. It wasn't your car. It wasn't your husband. It wasn't your children. It was love that transformed you. It was something got in you. He says it right here in the text, 17 and 18. Herein I love made perfect. Perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because he is, and so we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear because fear hated has tormented it. And fear is not made perfect in love. The word perfected here, he used it three times in this text, which means mature, growing up, understanding where you are, understanding I got to love you in spite of because God loved me first. So what I want to do is simplify God's love through me and share it with you. Look what he says. He has proclaimed the love. He has proven his love to us. And he has perfected his love. So all we got to do is work through that. Brothers and sisters, we lose the sight of this because we lose the power that love possesses. I can't love you unless I have the power of God on the inside. The power overrides. Let me give you a scenario. The wind and the atmosphere, this gravity hold. Gravity holds and holding you down right now. If it wasn't for gravity, we'd be all be floating in space. And so man came up with the idea, we're going to fly from the ground into whatever we need to fly into. So guess what he did? He makes a jet or engine. That jet engine says, I don't care what gravity says, if I have enough throttle and combustion and burst, I'll fly right through it. What that engine does, it says, forget this, I'm going up. So when something come against you, you don't like it, you should have enough power in you. Then you say, you know what? I'm going to fly right through this. I know what you said. I know what you did, but I'm going to fly right through you because I got enough power to fly above your foolishness. I got enough power. That jet says, you know what? You can't hold me at the Armstrong Airport because I'm going to California. I'm going to get up from the ground and I'm going to fly above all this down here. I'm not even going to be taken. Look what that jet does. It's nothing around it but air. Look what God does when he picks you up with the power. He moves you above the foolishness and the cares of this life and take you to the destiny you need to be on. Yes, Shabbat. That's what God says. You got to have the power of love. You can't be talking love. You got to have power inside of you. It makes us make the world go around. Someone says they have not been changed by God's love. It's like a person who says, I have never experienced COVID. If you've ever experienced COVID, 
you've been changed. If you grab a 220 electric line, I promise you, you've been changed. If you grab a 440 line, you've been changed. You cannot experience God's love to the full totality of it and say you have not changed. There's no way you can do it because what you're basically saying, God, you're not true in what you're saying. Emphatically, you're wrong because you gave me something that has no power. When they made those jet engines, they made them to go above uh, all that would try to hinder them. And so then you would tell the engine company, you defeated. That's not true. That jet gonna get out of here. And let me tell you, the love of God gonna get you out of here and get you over stuff you're trying to deal with. Brothers and sisters, you must understand, God doesn't, watch this now, listen to this, God doesn't change you so that he can love you he loves you in order to change you. He loves you in order to change you. He loved me in order to make me be different, to make me see life differently. That's why right now, all this going on in this country, if there was true love with people, you wouldn't have this infighting and this injustice because if you love me, you wouldn't hurt me. You wouldn't put snares on me. You wouldn't say evil things about me if you hurt me. If you love me, why would you talk bad about me? Why would you cast me down? Mm -hmm. If you have the love of God in you, there's no way you're going to do that. See, I'm kind of tired of people talking talk, misquoting information, don't have it right. You see, I've said years ago, I don't mind going to jail, but when I get there, I'm gonna be innocent. I can't stop them from handcuffing me. I can't stop them from giving, subpoenaing me. But when I get there, your honor, I'm innocent. I can't stop folk from suing me. But when they get to court, the case will be denied. I can't stop them. You need to be in a possible position in life where when people come against you, you are vindicated. You're free because you made yourself free. And you swear it upon the oath you will love like Jesus loved. Brothers and sisters, so how can God change us through his power of love? I'm glad you asked. It's through the future of his confidence. Of the shame, he says, he's also able, uh, also with confidence from knowing the deep things of God. First of all, by his presence, we have faith instead of fear. Watch this. He uses fear four times in this text. Why is John so relevant about fear? Why is he connecting love with fear? Because he knows if fear grips your heart, love goes out. Why do we saw such an insurrection on January the 6th? Because people were fearful that they said, we lose in our country. Fear grip their hearts. Fear will grip your heart and cause you to do something that's really very ungodly and very devastating because you're afraid. Fear is nothing but false evidence appearing to be real. Sometime it is real, but most time it's false evidence. Look what John, John is trying to address an issue. So he says, because God loves you, you can't live in fear. One of the reasons why people live in fear because they don't understand God's love. John said there is no fear in love. He says in the text, fear is the result of a fall. Watch this. Because when Adam and Eve sinned, basically it was Adam. Adam sinned because he feared. Eve gave it to him. And because of the fear, they fell and that brought sin to us. When you fear, it brings about sin in your life. You don't have to hear what I'm saying. So then fear involves what? Punishment. Punishment comes from the word which means to limit or restrain you. For limits to restrain you. It means to paralyze you. Lock you up in prison. So fear paralyze your thoughts fear paralyze
cannibalize your way of thinking because you fear something. And so what you do, you put up a defense and what you try to do is hurt them because you think they're going to hurt you, but they're not trying to hurt you. That's your fear in your mind. You're saying things about people that's not even real. I think he's going to kill me. You think, but you don't know. You don't have to gymnastic the Greek word. You think. You can't think in life. You've got to know in life. John says it will paralyze and restrict you from loving each other. I think my brother don't like me. I think my sister don't like you. think. Who told you to think like that? Fear told you to think like that. Watch this, brothers. Watch this, watch this. Some Christians today are still living in fear. Carrying a big King James Bible. But yet fear has gripped their hearts. Fear has paralyzed them. You're losing your health. You're dying. You're going broke. You're unemployed. And you're saying, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. The stimulus check is not here. I don't know. They told me they're going to close my job down. Listen, child of God, David said, I was young and I am old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. There's no way I've been walking with God for 44 years and God's going to let me fall off my ducky and let me break my neck and fall down like humping the duck. Ain't no way. I've been loving God too long. If God got to go create a job, if he got to go manufacture God in the pond somewhere, he's going to give me a job. He's going to make things work for me because I serve God. Yes, I don't know, see ya. I'm not serving some loose cannon. I'm serving God. How God's church going to work if there's no tithe and offering coming in? How God's church going to work if we're not lifting him up? So that means God going to shut the church down? The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Take that fear out of your heart. I told you when I was in the hospital, I never feared I was going to die. I just wanted to get out of this place because I didn't feel good. I wouldn't think about dying. I just need to get back to do what I was doing. I didn't feel good. Brothers and sisters, and my wife said she prayed, Lord, whatever you do to him, don't allow fear to grip his heart. Fear didn't grip my heart. Because if I had been fearful, I probably wouldn't be standing on this stage today. Fear would take you out. Many times people die because they die of this being fearful. Look what Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. You see, when fear grips your heart, your mind can't be sound. You don't think rational. You think irrational because you think somebody is trying to hurt you. So then God knows uh, how to love us because he is love. Because he sent his only begotten son into the world that you and I might be saved. The last point I'm going to close this text because God has empowered us. Look what God did. He empowered us to be where we are today to have all the things that we have. It was God that has empowered us. Brothers and sisters, you must understand today because he's empowered us, he's given us something that we need to deal with. Look what Thur Marshall, uh, uh, Thurgood Marshall, I'm sorry, said, and I quote, where you see wrong or in inequality or injustice, uh, speak out because this is your country. This is your democracy. Make it, protest it, and pass it. Thurgood Marshall quote, and I quote again, a man can make what he wants of himself if he truly believe that he must be ready for the hard work and the many heartbreaks. If you go going to tackle love today, Get ready to be disappointed. Get ready for folks to tell you they don't like you. Get ready for folks to put you down. Look what Maya Angelou says, and I quote, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will never forget how you made them feel. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside. 
Prejudice is a burden that confuses the past, threatens the future, and renders the present inaccessible. Brothers and sisters, Frederick Douglass, I quote, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Power concerned nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. So brothers and sisters, look what God has done for you and I. He put us in a place to give us power. Before you and I got saved, we didn't know how to love and we didn't know how to enjoy the fruits of our flavor from God. But I'm so glad John writes to us and tell us to experience the power of the love of God. If we try to love on our own power, we're going to fail. If we try to caress people and forgive them on our own power, we're going to fail. But I'm so glad this morning that I, I can be successful in loving because I have a loving God who's wrapped his arms around me. I have a loving God who told me everything will be alright. Love is like a faucet or sink. The faucet isn't the source of the water. It just releases the water. It doesn't manufacture water. Uh, it's just a channel for the water. If you want water, if you want love, you got to turn on Jesus and the challenge of us today is to stay hooked up to Jesus because Jesus is love if I want my water to run I got to turn on the faucet if I want my love to be exuberated I got to turn on Jesus love is of God and we're never able to fully love until we experience the power of God that's why I'm so glad I got the Holy Ghost Folks, I didn't want to like and didn't want to love. Now let me tell you this. Jesus never said like your enemy. He never said like your brother. But he said love. See, I can like you but not love you. I can like what you do to me. I can like what you say to me. I can like how you make me feel. But I ain't got to love you. How many folks have married? today. They ain't not in love. They just like what they're getting from the spouse. They just like what the benefits are. But when you love them, you'll stay with them. They won't be no divorce. You ain't gonna leave them when time get rough. And I'm so glad that God got loving me. I got to love others in spite of the differences. I got to love you and I got to love my neighbor in spite of how they treat me brothers and sisters love will change your mind love is so powerful love it'll turn hate and procrastinate you love will make a man forget what he said love but turn it around and I'm so glad I've experienced God's love. Have you ever experienced the love of God? If you have not, you need to tell yourself, this is the day I'm going to love God. He said in Psalm 91, he said, I've set my love upon you. Look what Jesus said in the Old Testament. God said, I give you long and satisfy you. When I was in the hospital, I had my Bible turned to Psalm 91. And that's all I could do. I could not read it, but I had it there. Guess what we do now? Every night before we go to bed, my wife would read Psalm 91. And we would say at the end, long life shall I give thee, long life shall I give thee because I set my love upon you and I don't know about you but I, 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 I so glad that God 
back setting love upon me with my nasty self with my ungodly way with my terrible spirit Jesus stepped in like a natural man Jesus stepped in and said Daniel I'm going to change your way you ain't right you ain't living right you ain't going to be right until I get in you is anybody out there no God stepped in your life God stepped in your story God stepped in your hate God stepped in your mess I, 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 so glad that he stepped in so glad he picked me up turned me around put my feet on a solid ground yes he did yes he did and I so glad he did somebody say yeah it was love that lifted me. It was love to turn me around. It was love. So glad for the love. So glad for the love. It was love that lifted me. Pull me up out of the gutter. It was love. But put a new thought in my mind. It was love told me everything would be all right. It was love that told me you think you're gonna die, but Jesus said, "I got love for you." I just heard this long ago. I just heard this story. The person told me. I said I had COVID. He said, "Guess what?" He said, hell didn't want you. And heaven wasn't ready for you. Hey, yeah. Hell didn't want me. And heaven wasn't ready. So I want to tell you, if you get sick, hell ain't ready for you. Hell don't want you. And heaven said, ain't time to come home. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So glad. Bless you today. I trust knowing God's love will help you to some extent. You'll never be the same again. Go tell that grandmama. Go tell that cousin. Go tell that old boyfriend. You forgive him. Go tell that girlfriend. You forgive them. Tell that boss. I forgive you, sir, because I love Jesus more than anything. If you do that today, I promise you, you'll feel better. Your heart rate will go down. You'll feel better. Though how blood pressure pills you're taking, you may reduce that. Mm -hmm. That hypertension, uh -huh. that nervousness you're having, that fear that's coming over you. When perfect love comes in, it changes all the dynamics of all of that. We love you with the love of God. My friend, if you're watching me now, wherever you may be watching this broadcast, take a moment to tell God, I really want your love. Out of all the love in the world, I want your love. Your love is the greatest love that we can ever have. And I want to thank you for it now in advance. Tell him you were a sinner. You're not right, but you want to get it right. Until you admit you're wrong, you can never be right. And so Lord, make me right today I want to pray with you right now Father whoever's watching this and wherever they may be at the present moment give them that love they need reassure them today that you are the savior you are the master and you're the cleaner up of life and they will never be the same if they turn their life over to you I thank you for them right now in Jesus name if you pray that prayer and you believe that God can help you, find your church that believe God. Find your church that knows the word. I promise you, you will grow thereby as babe will sense him of the word and he will help you today. We love you to life and there's nothing you 
can do about it. So bless you again, my friends. The last thing, my friends, I want to ask you, if you were so into this ministry, wherever you are right now, any amount will be wonderful. Whatever you decide to give us, no amount too large and too small. And we want you to believe that we believe that we're doing the right thing for God. So all you got to do, you can text us by Cash App. You can go to Givelify. Those are two means we have available right now for you to give to this ministry. Sow a seed that we can continue to do what we're doing here at Philadelphia Ministries. There's a lot of things that we're doing and we're grateful for it. And you'll see what will be a blessing to what we're doing. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to sow to us. God loves you again. We love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. And we'll see you on the next broadcast.